Hi, I'm Ellen Hannock. I'm an economist with the Public Policy Institute of California. And I'd like to talk to you today about some big challenges California faces in the water sector. The state is in the midst of some intense debates about water, which is really one of our most important natural resources. We're just coming out of a wet winter, but this is on the heels of three years of drought, severe drought, which have depleted reservoirs and groundwater basins. And this has also been a period where we've seen some new environmental restrictions on pumping water through the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta, which is a source of supply for a lot of folks in the urban areas, both in the Bay Area and Southern California, as well as farms in the San Joaquin Valley. Looking over the longer term, we're facing population growth and challenges with climate change. These are both going to put increased pressure on our water resources. So it means, if you look at the overall picture, that California really is going to need to be basing decisions on an accurate understanding of our water situation and our water opportunities. The problem here is that there are a lot of myths that are out there circulating both among the public and in policymaking circles. So I'd like to talk to you about a few of these myths. So the first myth I'd like to start with is the myth that California is running out of water. We've been hearing about that a lot over the recent drought. And the reality is that California ran out of cheap water a long time ago. Water is scarce in California. We have a climate that is variable and we're gonna always be facing some periods of drought and some periods where we have a lot of water. And we're gonna to have to be able to manage this scarcity. The good news is that Californians have shown that they can adapt. We've already seen a lot of improvements in irrigation methods in the agricultural sector. Urban residents have been cutting water use, and there have been a lot of improvements in management among water agencies. So the bottom line is that we can handle scarcity. We're going to have to innovate, can keep innovating, but it's not going to destroy our economy, and we can manage it. Second myth, and this is my favorite. This is the myth of the water villain. This is something everybody pretty much has a villain in their pocket. Somebody else is responsible for California's water problems. The reality is that there are no true villains. So just give you a few examples of the kind of villains that we hear about. Wasteful Southern California homeowners with their pools and their lawns. Well, yes, okay, Southern California is home to a lot of the state's population. But if you look at the trends, they've actually been making major efforts on water use efficiency. They have some of the lowest per capita use in the state. Another favorite villain of urban sector Residents is federally subsidized farmers, farmers who receive water very cheaply through federal government projects. Well, the reality there is that they have also been improving their efficiency a lot, especially since the early 1980s. Endangered Species Act, that's a favorite villain of urban and agricultural users whose water supply has been cut back because of pumping restrictions. Well, it turns out that if you remove those restrictions, it would not make the water problems go away for human users. So you really need to think about the problem as a system as a whole, shared responsibility of all the different water users. We can all make better use of water, and there are no villains. Now, another class of myths, that's sort of the easy solutions, silver bullet kinds of solutions. So one of them is that we can build our way out of California's water problems with some kind of technological fix. The reality is that there is no technological solution, whether it's desalination plants, new surface storage, a peripheral canal around the delta, none of them is a panacea. They can all be useful if you think about them in the context of a portfolio approach where you're combining a lot of different options along with things that are not technological fixes like water markets where you're moving some water from low value uses to higher value uses, underground storage where you're using wet years, taking advantage of wet years to store water in the groundwater basins, reuse, conservation. Those all are part of our solution. That also brings me to another myth about conservation. Um, there are some folks that kind of view conservation as the silver bullet, think we can just conserve our way out of California's water problems without any other infrastructure needs. The reality is that conservation is important, but its potential to free up water for other users is often overstated. And people often forget that conservation has costs too. So for example, one way of saving a lot of water in the urban sector is by switching out from lawns to low water using plants with drip irrigation. That can save a lot of water, but it's also costly. Thinking about this overall and the problem of myths and how to get past them, we really need to think about getting beyond myths by improving our information and reporting to get a better understanding of policy options and 
availability of solutions. And part of this means better data reporting. This is going to be a challenge because a lot of times you have stakeholder resistance to reporting this kind of information. But if the state's leaders are serious about tackling the problems, they're going to need to insist on this. California is really facing some crucial challenges and decisions ahead over the coming years and decades about this water resource that's so important for the state. And we really need to be sure that those decisions are based on reality, not myth.